right, I got my two Tacomas here. They have two separate motors, so I figured we would go ahead and do a video just kind of on the different motors you got in the first gen Tacoma. First gen Tacomas, they go from 95 and a half clear up to 2004, like old Goldie there. And uh, you can get two engines in them a 2.7 liter four cylinder or a 3.4 liter six cylinder. <coughs> the 2.7 liter, it's got 150 horsepower, 177 foot pounds of torque. Both these engines are phenomenal freaking motors. I mean, they are really both great motors, but they kind of have their pros and cons. Some pros here on the 2.7 liter is obviously it gets better fuel mileage being the four cylinder than the 3.4 liter. They're both tougher than heck. You can beat the heck out of them, whatever, and you know, go wheeling up in the hills all day long and then drive home. You know, you don't really have to worry about breaking the motor too much. They are, they have certain weak, weak points, like the 2.7 liter, which when I say weak points, these are still a lot stronger than most engines on the market. These are just like, occasionally you might have the problem with, you know, like these 2.7 liters, they have a timing chain. So, you know, as a chain, it'll stretch eventually, whatever. And uh, even though I don't think there's really a maintenance interval on it, not that I've read up about, <laughs> but you can, with a timing chain, like an old 22RE, whatever, you can hear it start to slap and, you know, and then if you hop timing, you'll have a problem there, which these don't have like the plastic guides and all that, like the old 22RE, which this is kind of an updated version of the 22RE, per se. <laughs> Just tougher than heck, great fuel mileage drive around the hills all day long whatever and you come home you still got a half tank thrashing around i mean which is freaking excellent which is why it's good for this platform being a standard cab like this one is which all standard cabs past 97 have the 2.7 liter if you find that holy grail of a standard cab with a 3.4 liter in it freaking get it because they are awesome and uh, 190 horsepower is the 3.4 in a standard cab is stupid so i kind of understand why toyota stopped putting them in the standard cabs even though yeah i like horsepower so you know I... so standard cab above 97 to 2004 you'll get the 3rz great motors sure this one has a couple little things done to it it's got a intake here and then it's got the freaking uh the balance balanced shaft or whatever it is whatever has been deleted in this so it gives it a little bit more horsepower so i'm probably around 100 and 160 maybe maybe 70 horsepower in it but 177 pounds of torque which with the air filter and stuff like that i'm not sure how much torque it would add but these aren't really torquey motors these motors they actually do really good in high rpm unlike the old 22 re the 22 re was more of a low compression engine so they do better kind of in the lower rpms and once you wrap them out there really isn't a lot up top whatever you get the good bull so like people with crawlers you notice they actually run the 22 re more even though it would gear right whatever you can you know you could run a 2.7 liter and have that extra -da 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 stupidness because uh these have a rev limiter in them right at 5500 rpm and you can't hurt this thing you can sit there and tag that rev limit well, you, you can you can but you're safe to bounce off that rev limiter from time to time i mean it's there for a reason you know i wouldn't advise just go around drive everywhere you go on the rev limiter eventually you'll probably hurt something <laughs> and uh, the 22 REs, they actually had a problem overheating. At least everyone I've had, I've, I've, you know, you're down on the beach and you're having to hold, wound out just to make where you're going. And then cat running around. You know, I'll end up overheating the 22 RE, which was a problem. You'd end up overheating the heck out of them, whatever, and you'll blow the head gasket. So these, you do have to worry about the heads. I mean, a little bit of around 220,000 miles, whatever, or above 200,000. I have seen a couple with blowed head gaskets, but it's not half as common on these 3RZs as it is, per se, like a 22RE or a 3 liter for that matter. So there are a couple things to watch out for, but hands down, it is a freaking bulletproof platform. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the greatest motors. 
Toyota have, has ever made. Both of these really are. They are phenomenal motors. <coughs> and uh, as you can see, this one, this one's pretty far from stock. It's a little beefed up and on bigger tires. It's geared lower, so I can actually run the 35s. And uh, pretty much feels like my old red one I had that I ran 33s on. Maybe a little bit more peppy than that, because I'm running 488 gears in it. Great pickup, standard cab, got a canopy on so we can throw the dogs, take it up in the hills, and good rig. This one here, old Goldie, this is the 3.4 liter V6. You know, and this one being the extra cab, and uh, I'll throw stuff in the back, I'll, you know, have this thing loaded down, firewood, and all my camping stuff, and stuff like that. This is the one I'll take on trips, per se, to where it's nice to have that little bit extra torque which this one here, these 3.4 liters, they come with uh, 190 horsepower and uh, 220, 219, I'm pretty sure, foot-pounds of torque. So you got not a ton more torque, whatever, and, you know, 190, that's pretty good. I mean, it's not like, like, I think the, you know, the Chevy V6, the 4.3 at the time, it had quite a bit more horsepower, and the Ford 4 liter, I'm pretty sure, had more horsepower. So the Fords and the Chevys were more horsepower than these, but how many more of these do you see on the road nowadays than the Chevy or the Ford? Not saying that those are bad pickups or bad motors, it's just this one has the known reliability, which Toyota kind of, that's their motto per se you know don't throw a bunch of horsepower at, you know unless you're like a freaking 2jz more focus on reliability every since you know world war ii that was kind of toyota's thing when they developed their first car or whatever you want this to be a reliable rig so with that in mind toyota has actually carried that through the years which is freaking awesome is why i'm kind of a fan of toyota's So, 190 horsepower, 220 pound, foot-pounds of torque, which helps, say you're pulling up a hill, whatever, you know, you can leave this one in fifth and actually pull the hill. This one here, drop down in fourth. I mean, this one does have 285 tires on it. It's stock geared, which I believe are 410s, I'm not 100% sure. So, that pulls a little bit away from it, but at the same time, it's still freaking fun i mean it's it's got plenty of power to get me where i want to go it <clears throat> and it's got a little bit more options this one does this one's a trd so it came with the fancier suspension from the factory and, and it's a 2004 this is actually the last year of this body style and after this body style they went to the second gen gen toyota whatever with a four liter v6 and then the two tr I do believe or 3TR whatever 2.7 liter which I'm not 100% sure the differences on the 2.7 liter past 2005 I've never had one personally I had the 4 liter with a 6 speed and I wasn't really a big fan I liked them in an automatic my buddy had an automatic in his and I, I really liked his pickup but my 6 speed manual I mean if I would have changed the gearing and the axles and stuff like that I probably would have liked it more it just seemed like it was a highway rig and it was bigger more comfortable in the cab but it just didn't feel like a toyota so i you know i wanted to go back to the first gen tacoma platform because i mean it feels like a toyota you drive this thing it really does it you feel like you're in a toyota it's a little small and me and my old lady are both pretty big people whatever so we're <coughs> you know beating around in there but at the same time we can make it through all these trails and stuff like that and we can get home so we have no problem at all hopping in this thing driving up to the snow messing around making it home they're both super reliable vehicles the tacoma has a little bit of a downfall on these first gens the lower ball joints and uh when you go to change suspension or anything like that say you were to do like upper control arms or you beef something up whatever you end up breaking your freaking spindle itself but you, every time you make something stronger it exposes another weak point which i mean these 
that lower ball joint if you stay up on maintenance whatever you won't really have to worry about it just when you jack your tires up make sure and give them a shake or sit there with a bar and check on them 100 you know, then you go throwing a lift on them whatever it makes that top ball joint sit all crazy so i mean you have to watch out for that too uh, if you don't want to blow your top ball joint and rip all, everything out <laughs> so if you're looking at a tacoma i mean if i was to make my pick on which one's a better motor it would be really freaking hard because they are both just phenomenal freaking motors it's easy to see these both of these motors above 500,000 miles <laughs> you know and they don't not all of them end up to be that way whatever because a lot of it depends on maintenance but in all reality you take care of either one of these motors you're going to be completely happy with it <laughs> which looking at things I, I got some stuff i need to clean up on my battery terminals here and I, I'm pretty good about maintenance. At the same time, you could always get better, you know? <laughs> Which most of my driving and stuff like that, I drive a work pickup, so I don't drive these rigs very often, but when I do, they both have their specific purposes. So I wouldn't wanna do what it, what's done there to this one, you know? Solid axle swap with the Dana 44, which is freaking awesome in this platform phenomenal these short wheelbases just get around so good just these standard cabs it's crazy the places you can make in these even stock i mean it is stupid what you can do with just 31 inch tires on them but you go geared and solid axles and 35s it's just you're in a whole new rain you know realm and so i haven't been doing many videos last one i did week or two ago like that we were out in the rain and water got on the microphone so we couldn't really post that one because you can hear what i was talking about but uh <clears throat> ordered a mic so hopefully i get to doing more video for you guys and if you haven't seen any of my videos then howdy my name's rob i kind of do dumb videos you know i try to do them right off the top of my head i don't really like cutting them up too much whatever which is a little bit harder but I, I just more original that way which I might do the cut up videos from time to time just because I'm dumb and say dumb stuff, whatever, and want to cut it out. But 2.7 liter, 3.4 liter, both phenomenal motors. It's really hard to make a decision which one is better. I lean a little bit more towards the 3RZ just because the better fuel mileage. Nowadays, everything's so freaking expensive and I'm a brokey, so I could drive around all day go thrashing in the hills with my buddies whatever and come back and still have a half tank which is freaking sweet i mean even with these bigger tires and stuff like that this thing is so much better on fuel than the 3.4 but this 3.4 especially this one here whatever because i've known the pickup since brand new so i know all the maintenance on it everything like that whatever <coughs> great freaking pickup and plus a lot of a lot of my buddies have 3.4s and actually I think I have one, two, three, four. I have four of them myself, so, you know, and I've only got one of these, so, you know, take what you, take what you want from that. Big fan of the 2.7 liters. This is actually the third pickup I've had with a 2.7. I've had so many freaking rigs, it's, it's insane to keep track of sometimes, but wanted another one wanted a standard cab even though i'm big old oaf and barely fit in it i freaking love them just because the places you can go with them <laughs> the whole time i had my old red one which i had my old red one for years and years and years this is what I always wanted to do to it. I always wanted a freaking straight axle lid, you know, and locker in the back, even though that one did get locked up. So it was, it was pretty, pretty sweet. But at the same time, once you go straight axle and you can't really bonsai as good. Like my buddy Garrett, he's got 2.7 liter standard cab and man, he puts in four high in first gear. And I, I swear, it is stupid riding with him just because he can hit everything so much harder because it doesn't <laughs> smash you around so much. It, his, his pickup does phenomenal. Which, in 95 and a half, when they first did the 2.7 liter, they actually had a distributor on it. And uh, 
And then in 97, I believe, was the first year of the two coil pack setup where two, one coil pack runs two spark plugs. And then in 2000, whatever, they actually went to single coil packs for every cylinder or whatever, which those are a little bit more desirable. And in my opinion, they actually, they feel like they have more horsepower, even though it's kind of weird how Toyota just rated it 150 horsepower across the board on these 2.7 liters. I'm pretty sure the distributor one has a little bit less horsepower than the dual coil pack and I, I know for a fact whatever the individual coil pack one has a little bit more scoop than the dual so if I was to advise something if you're going to go drive around in the hills mostly or something like that or run up and down like say a flat road if you're pulling more hills and falling something you know I'd go more for a 3.4 liter but say you find a good deal on one with a 2.7 liter i mean freaking snag it up they're great motors way better fuel mods like i said and not only that they're just just as reliable as a 3.4 if not right there close because it's 3.4 it's just stupid i mean stupid reliable my like i say about my old uh, t100 i've got the thing's just too stupid to die and i've tried to kill it time and time again if you watch some of my earlier videos it'll give you a taste it's a little taste of how mean I was to it because, you know, the cameras don't roll all the time and that thing got beat all the time. <laughs> so I'd sit back in the woods and I got to fix it, which I'd like to go this route with my T100. So I'm still in a toss up. So it's sitting out in the bush until I finally make my mind up if I want to just fix the front end in it or rip it all out and throw a Dana 44 under it. <clears throat> but that's for another video. That's for me to decide, decide down the road. So, all right, the old lady will throw in some clips, maybe me thrashing around in both of these, and hopefully you guys enjoy. Stay awesome. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you aren't subscribed, maybe think about that, because I'm planning on kind of trying to stay up on doing more videos. <laughs> but, nope, I can't really make any promises. We both have full-time jobs and kind of do this as a hobby. And not only that, I like to do videos about new things i don't like to just keep being repetitive i mean i could do a hundred videos about this pickup just alone right here but eventually you guys are gonna be like dude i don't care you know so and i can't afford to buy a freaking new video a new rig for every video like i said i'm kind of a brokey but stay awesome thank you for watching and uh yeah just stay awesome to yourself and to other people thank you